football has taught me so many things in life it has taught me to you know be in a very calm state of mind have that adrenaline rush but at the same time enjoy the game and have passion for the game this is exactly what you would expect from any professional player out there who is trying to give their all for a football club but unfortunately at the moment a football club which is you know struggling to find its peak form with the quality of players that they have is fc barcelona and if not for xavi who else is to take the responsibility it is all about you know how you set up a team having talked about so many things off the pitch you may talk about the financial crisis it can be the transfer policy it can be the kind of players that they have recruited the wage bills it is just extraordinary how this football club has turned its fortunes around it is not even you know one season over that we saw lionel messi leave the camp nou and today we have seen signings like adam traore and pierre emerick obameyang starting for fc barcelona in a very high profile match yes it's only the europa league but still they were coming up against napoli and i was expecting fc barcelona to you know completely raise the roof take everyone by surprise play that pragmatic football and create those chances which the camp nou wants to see everyone everyone who was there in the stadium would have expected that there were roughly 75000 fans this was like a proper football game which had so many things in stake but unfortunately we are seeing fc barcelona keeping the possession in the first half especially you all know how zavi likes to play football he likes to dominate the game he likes to you know press his defenders higher up the pitch they maintained a really high line yesterday with oscar mingueza eric garcia gerard pique and jordi alba this is a very very different back four which we have not seen in the past dani alves was not there for this match and i really expected the midfield of barcelona to do well especially when you have a player like pedri and franky de jong on the ball and it was a debut start for pierre emerick obameyang a full fledged match after so many months having missed out with arsenal it was time for the gabonese striker to shine however you know the first half was just incredible for the kind of possession that barcelona had they created nothing literally nothing they had a few chances ferran torres was quite wasteful and soon after he missed his lines it was napoli who took the lead it was a very well constructed goal down the right hand side their striker victor was really amazing he was stretching barcelona's defense and what does he do he cuts back the ball in a very dangerous area and the polish midfielder i think it's zielinski he he plays in a very deep lying position and he comes on the back and hits it to the crossbar and once again the rebound is there for everyone to see and it is a goal for napoli zielinski is alert and it is 1-0 to the italian club and you are still thinking that fc barcelona after keeping so much possession how can they be so exposed at the back after just one ball over the top well we have seen time and time again that barcelona is very difficult to break through but just a ball over the top is enough to open up the defense they maintain such a high line and they try to retrieve the ball back in such a high area of the pitch that they try to you know suppress and squeeze the opposition in one area of the pitch however when that doesn't work out and when the other team is strong enough to come out with possession they are very very vulnerable and this is the most you know major threat you can say for fc barcelona right now that is how they would be able to you know cope up with the challenges ahead and going into this match i was expecting barcelona to do what they always do that is to keep possession but soon after they concede in half time it's 1-0 and i was expecting xavi to give a stern team talk not just to you know the strikers for being wasteful not just to ferran torres but to the entire team because we saw that kind of tempo we saw that kind of intensity throughout the game but nothing really you know scared napoli everything was in front of them they maintained a really good 4-4-2 formation lorenzo insigne was helping down his defense on the left hand side and obviously on the right hand side there were good enough players to you know double up with the other ones and it is something which we have seen that italian teams are very good at doing they like to frustrate the opposition especially away from home and that is exactly why i felt 
that Luciano Spalletti got his tactics spot on for this match. And going into the second half, I did expect a change in formation. Rather not a change in formation, but a change in personnel for FC Barcelona. They did bring in Sergio Busquets. They did bring in Gavi, the sensational 17-year-old teenager who has been a wonder kid for FC Barcelona. Well, they played with a higher intensity. Everything was more higher up the pitch. They were retrieving the ball back within maybe 10 to 15 seconds, not allowing Napoli to come out of their shell. And that just increased the pressure on the Italian club. And a stroke of luck, you know, changed the fortunes for Barcelona. It was a very, very dubious decision, but it was actually a handball, which eventually went to VAR and it is a penalty to Barcelona. Ferran Torres, the man who made a major signing this transfer window from Manchester City to Barcelona was there to take it from the spot and he puts it in the back of the net. A player who is in confidence when he's shining, when he's scoring goals and it is all visible in his touches. But we have to be honest, he's not at the same level like Luis Suarez who was so prolific for FC Barcelona. However, I just feel that Ferran Torres does deserve time. He does require some more, you know, uh, kind of game time to relieve the pressure and some things which he can learn from the major players, from the experienced players in the squad, like a Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, who is lethal in front of goal. Yes, he can definitely improve his finishing. There were so many doubts over his selection for this match, but once again, he was wasteful. But over the balance of play, he was outstanding. And, you know, as the match progressed, Usman Dembele came on. A man who is so, so suspicious. Everyone in the Catalan crowd are against him for the contractual situation that he has with the club. And they were kind of booing him every time he got the ball. But we all know what Usman Dembele can bring to the table. That is creativity, pace and taking on defenders one-on-one. That is exactly what he did throughout the time when he was there on the pitch. And this is why I feel that Dembele should not leave Barcelona. Because he's one kind of player who can make the difference coming off the bench. He can bring that electric pace and he can stretch the opposition. That is when Usman Dembele is at his dangerous best and it is obviously worth watching. Yes, he created chances. Luke De Jong came on. But they were quite closed to securing all three points and winning the match. But I just feel that, you know, Napoli just held on very well. Especially you have a player like Kalidu Koulibaly who is at the back. He's commanding the back line. And I think the goalkeeper was also sensational. He pulled out a few saves and it was really, really crucial. Barcelona could have won this match, let's be honest, by four goals or five goals. It could have been a mauling for Napoli. However, this is a game of football. Anything can happen and I just feel that over the balance of the two halves, I just feel that the draw is a deserving result. And going into the next leg that is in Naples, it will be very interesting to see how Xavi sets up his team. This is not the prime Barcelona that we are watching last 10 years. Messi, Iniesta, Xavi, these were the players who were part of the golden generation. However, this club has declined and it has declined massively. It is in a phase of rebuild and it will still take time to hit the pinnacles of success. So guys, please drop in your thoughts. Barcelona is in a very big conundrum. Xavi is in a very big dilemma. Who will he pick for the next match? Will he stick to the same starting eleven, or will Danny Alves be fit enough to you know, recover and will he be able to play in the second leg? All the major talking points in this match will be, you know, looked at and obviously I would be, you know, reviewing the second leg as well. Let's hope that Barcelona can find its form and move into the next round in the Europa League. So guys, put in your thoughts, who was your man of the match? Do you feel that Barcelona, you know, missed out on a major opportunity to take a stranglehold on Napoli? Or do you think Napoli were really good in terms of defense and in terms of attack? So guys, put in your thoughts and for regular updates from the world of football, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So until next time, stay safe and take care.